Well, that ain't good. Heating up today, that's for darn sure. It's supposed to have a heat index tonight around six o'clock. It's about two in the afternoon right now, but about six o'clock tonight of 100 or more. And you can just feel the temperature going up. The air is getting thicker. I think the dew point is, uh, is going way up right now. Clouds are kind of breaking up for the time being. However, they say we could get some severe weather later on. And I imagine if the sun comes out and it heats up like they say it's going to, I would imagine there's gonna be some big storms somewhere in Iowa tonight. And as you probably just saw at the very beginning of this video, I uh, have a little problem. Wheel bearing. Yep, we have a little play in the wheel bearing there. And I, I jacked this up, just pulled it in here yesterday and I jacked it up, I did the same thing. And I also did it over here on the driver's side. This one's tight, there's no play at all over on this side. But as I just showed you, this side does. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. A Little bit. So, I'm gonna have to pull this all apart and we're gonna put new inner and outer wheel bearings on this. And to do this, you've gotta take, you have to take your hub out, whether it's manual or automatic, whatever. You gotta take all the innards of that out, and I'll, I'll show you all that. But I noticed here lately on this truck, just driving down the road, it doesn't want to go, it just doesn't wanna keep in a straight line. I mean, it drives pretty straight, but every once in a while, it'll wanna just jog off to the left, jog to the right, not a lot, but just enough that it, it's, it's annoying. So yesterday I pulled her down here and jacked the front end up to investigate what the heck might be going on in the front end of this thing. And uh, I, I think I found the culprit going down the road and if this tire, you know, moves a little bit, I could see how that would wanna make the truck just kinda of jump over that way or jump that way a little bit. Wasn't really anything I could feel on the steering wheel very much or anything like that. It was just, just enough that you could notice it and uh, and not quite figure out what was going on. But we're gonna slap a new, well, we're gonna do both sides. We're gonna do this side and the other side and that should take care of that issue, I believe. And the bearings that I'm gonna be using to do this are Timken bearings, set 45s, set 37s, and I think that's the wrong seal. I just looked it up and I believe the 4148 is for on the Timken website anyway, it says 6180, well, I think it's before 6188. You need the 4250, which I do have two national brand oil seals. So uh, I think these are the ones I'm gonna have to use. I have, a, I have a complete set of national bearings over there as well. Don't remember why I bought two sets of bearings, but the only thing I don't like about the national is uh, I'll show you here. That right there, made in China. Maybe they're fine, maybe they're not. If I had nothing else, I'd probably throw them in, but I'm gonna use the good old Timken bearings. And I also have a brand new tub here of Timken wheel bearing grease, which I'm not gonna use on this. Seems like when I bought this, I can't, I don't remember who I talked to, but, uh, but they suggested that I should use this instead. Probably doesn't really matter, but this is what I'm gonna use. 
So I've already got the truck jacked up on this side. I should probably slap a jack stand underneath that. Need to pull the wheel off and then we're gonna pull this hub out. And I need to swap batteries in my camera and I'm also gonna get something to drink and turn the fan on because it's, it's warming up. do here I have to take the brake caliper off so we can get uh, get the rotor off so I might go ahead and do that hang it up here somewhere and then we'll come out here and we'll start taking this all apart and just two 13 millimeter bolts back here Tie it up out of the way here somewhere. Pull the brake pads out of here. Which would be a good time to replace if you need new brake pads, which I don't. And now, pull all this out. And I just hung my caliper back there. There's a hole in the frame that I stuck that zip tie through and tied it up back there so it's out of the way. And now we'll come in here and hopefully all these will come out without without uh, too much without too much trouble. Well I didn't really want to do this, but I'm gonna give each one of these a quick shot of penetrating fluid. Alright, give this another shot here. Got them all broke loose now. Just back them on out of here. Those suckers are in there tight. I guess I didn't get that one yet. Can't get that one for whatever reason. I'm going to loosen all these other ones up. I had to do this on that red truck, I believe, to take a Torx and should be able to pound it in there and get it out. snap ring fits in this groove down here and goes all the way around the outside of this thing you got to find the end of that and then I should be able to pop that out of there and the end of it right right there so I'm gonna move it down a little bit out there see if we can get that sucker out of there Just like that. Then take a couple of these screws, screw them back in. Just just a little ways. You're just using these to pull this out. Actually, I think there's another snapper that's got to come off. Yeah. Now this ought to pull out. Just like that. Then you take this here special socket. fit it in there, take the outside nut off, break it loose, take that outside locking nut off in there, which will come out in just a second. Right there. And then inside there is, I don't remember what this part's called, like a spacer, no, let's call it a spacer. I can't remember what it's called exactly. Maybe that's what it's called. It's in between the locking nut, oh, and the spindle nut, right there. 
And then you go back in here and get the spindle nut off. There it is. And on this one, this nut has a little a little locator on one side and that goes towards the outside when you put this back together. Because one of these holes is going to fit over that. Now your rotor is ready to come off and when it comes off, that inside or the outside bearing should just fall out with it. There you go. I gotta tell you, this bearing looks looks fine to me. It's packed full of grease. I don't see any marring or anything on it. But I've got new bearings. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. I've got it this far apart. I might as well put new bearings in it. The race inside here looks fine. Haven't looked at the inner bearing yet. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get it knocked out of there and get the races knocked out and get this all cleaned up. And, uh, and hopefully I'll take care of everything. So we'll flip this over and uh, get this seal popped out of here. All right, got our seal pulled out of there, which I guess, it, I guess that's just grease. I thought it was coming apart. Inner bearing. Clean this up a little bit, knock the races out of this. I'm gonna clean that bearing off, take a look at it real quick. I don't know, race that race looks fine, this bearing looks fine, it's full of grease. And now I'm gonna knock out the uh, knock out the inner race. Got that one out. Now we'll get this outer one knocked out, I'm going to take it outside and, like I said, use some parts cleaner and clean it all up on the inside. So I got my hub here, races out, the inside is, it's all cleaned out. And I painted it up down here, and I'll show you why. Been wanting to do that for quite a while, just never did. Like over here, well, the chrome on this one's all coming off. I need to get a need to get a new set of uh, locking hubs, but I always thought that would look better being painted black than uh, than the way it is. So by God, that's what I did. And then I also went down to the parts store. I thought I had one of these, and if if I do, I don't know what the heck I did with it. Went down and got a bearing race. Uh, driver, install tool, whatever you want to call it. So you pick out your driver that fits inside the race like that and get your handle. Need to put this on the handle and then we're going to drive this new race in there. Set 37 is the one that goes on the inside of this. So I'm going to set it in there like so. And we'll drive this on in. I think we got her. You can feel when it bottoms out, it also makes a little bit different sound. Just want to make sure. And there we go. So now we'll flip it over and do the outer race, which is the set 45 race.
Also going to take a different different driver, next smaller size, to get uh, to get that race in. And again, we're just going to put a little grease around the outside of this. Kind of heavy right there. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. Drop her on down inside. Get her squared up. Best you can. And drive her in. Now we'll flip it back over again. And we'll put the seal on the back side. And it is the 4250 seal that we need to use on these. Do the same thing with that. Just put a real light coating of grease right around there. Line it up in there. And sometimes you get making a video and forget to do things like uh, like put the bearing in before the seal. And before putting the bearing in, you need to pack it, which I, that's just grease. I may need to wash my hands a little bit, but two sides of the bearing, uh, like a small gap there where all the rollers are. This side, much larger. This is the side you want to take. Get a glob of grease in your hand. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that here in a minute. I'm going to wash my hands off real quick. And we'll pack that bearing. So you're going to want to get a glob of grease in your hand. Which, yeah, it's a, it's a dirty job. But you got to do it. Something like that. Take your bearing, and I wish that ball of grease was up a little further, but you just you get on the edge of it a little bit, and you just keep down, bring it back towards you, and you just keep doing that. And pretty soon, grease will start coming up through those. It's just starting. I was kind of taking too much, but you can see it coming up through the rollers, and that's what you want. You just kind of want to just kind of push and drag it into those rollers. So I'm going to keep doing this, get this bearing pack. I'll probably do the other one while my hands are all messy, and uh, then we'll put them in the truck. So last night I put this all back together and uh, thought my camera was recording and it wasn't. So what we have here, we have the hub with the seal and the inside bearing all in. All you do is slide that on the spindle, then you stick your outer bearing in and then the inside, the inside nut that has a little tab on it, a little little post sticking out, have that sticking out to the outside. And then you, you torque that inside nut down to 50 foot pounds and I loosened it back up. So you torque it down to 50 foot pounds while turning the rotor back and forth. Which can prove a little difficult to do because this likes to slide off. 
So just turn it a little bit, get this back on, tighten it a little more. If you push up on this, it helps. Instead of just in, push, push, uh, well, when tightening, you might want to push it down. I don't know. Yeah, push it down a little bit. Should be about there, I think. Yep, right there. I'm gonna give it a couple turns. And then it says to back it off 45 degrees. I've heard some people say 90 degrees. And I also heard that then you're supposed to put like 17 inch pounds on that nut, which I don't have a inch pound torque wrench, basically about hand tight. So we're going to back this off now. So there's about 45 degrees backed off. And that's all the tighter that nut gets. Then you take this, the spacer that has all the holes in it, locking spacer, I guess they call it. And you position this, you try to get it on that post. You may have to pull it back out and you're supposed to turn that nut just a little bit to get it to line up with the nearest hole. So slide him in there. All right, got it in there. Seems to be about where it was. I loosened it up just a tiny bit. It was off, so I tightened it just a tiny bit, and it, it's it's over that post now. So then you take this locking nut, and you tighten it to at least 150 foot-pounds, something like 150 to 200, I believe. So we'll get him in there. And my torque wrench only goes to 150 pounds. So, so that's what I'm going to do. There you go. And then just put the locking hub back in. Like that. If your axle shaft doesn't come all the way out, you may have to get back behind here with a screwdriver, pry bar or something. The U-joint back here, get on that, and you can push it out just a little bit so you can get the snap ring on it, as I will demonstrate here. There we go. Snap ring back on. Sure, he's in that groove. Put this wire snap ring back in its groove. Just like that. Put your cap back on. Put your screws back in. And you might just want to make sure everything's working right. And it is. Before you put your caliper back on, which I just have sitting back here now, you might want to wipe your rotor down with some brake cleaner. Uh, you can get back to it here where the pads sit. I'm just going to soak a rag and rotate the rotor around, wipe it off real good. Put your brake pads back on.
Get your caliper back on. Get your wheel on and we're done. And I always torque them down to a hundred foot pounds. So passenger side done, she seems nice and tight now. And I am gonna go ahead and get this side done. Then we'll take her out for a little drive, see if she drives a little better. And I will link all this down below. The bearings that I use are Timken. And uh, unlike the national brand that I have, these have USA right on the side of them. You know, set 37, a set 45, and you need a what is it? 4250. That's not it. 4250 seal. Yeah, you need a 4250 seal. This is a national seal. Timken's number is also 4250. Bearing grease, spindle nut socket. Two and three eighths outer spindle nut socket. I'll I'll try to link this down below as well. So like I just said, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna uh, back the truck out, back it in here, so I have a little more room. I don't have enough room over there. Do the driver's side, and then we'll take her for a spin. Well, the truck's driving much better than it was. Seems smoother, too. I, I'm not sure why, but just it does. And uh, not hard to keep going straight any longer. And who would have thought that George, yeah, you, would, uh, would like jalapeno chips? Anyway, it does seem like the wheel bearing was the issue with my truck wanting to kind of just, it, it would just randomly want to go a little to the left, a little to the right, and that problem seems to be fixed. So yeah, the wheel bearings, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Might as well be you. So don't forget to send in your license plate for the license plate wall. Haven't received much here lately. Or anything else that you want to send into the Fox shop. Jalapeno chips for George, maybe. Links down below in the description. There's also a link down there for t-shirts, hoodies, all that kind of stuff. Link down below. And that's going to do it for this video. Give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.